Yeah, welcome back to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press with Mr. Chris Awandu. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Mr. Awandu, can Thank you hear me? me? Oh, fantastic. Okay, so I want to begin with a few papers here. So, okay. All right, we'll start with the Daily Sun this morning and see what we can uh, quickly share with you. The uh, big one there you can see, it's going to be on the screen in a bit. Yes, it says uh, Buhari faults ban, OK's grazing reserves takeoff. Rubbishes Southern Governor's Resolution. Also, Southeast leaders decry injustice against Igbos. Another INEC office raised in Enugu. Uh, Diri condemns attack on Data's beef once against secret GMOUs. And also this morning, 2.35 million Nigerians displaced by bandits and flawed in 2020, says Nema, as Buhari receives agency's report. Uh, retired Commodore fears more Air Force plane crashes, says investigation report will be top secret. Insecurity, Chief of Army Staff and others' death has increased our problems, says the President. National dialogue would end agitations, and that's from the Benue State Governor, Otom. It will be Agu, Ebony, stakeholders rally support for Umahi. Amotekun pledges to end growing insecurity in Southwest. Lagos Ogun signed MOU on borderline development. And also ex-Niger Governor Aliyu, a mole in the PDP, says uh, Yesom Wike. Those are the stories on the Daily Sun. All right, moving on now to the Nigerian Tribune. The headline reads, Asaba Declaration. President, he attacks Southern governors. Accuses them of providing no solution. Says stance on open grazing has questionable legality. Above the headlines of the Nigerian Tribune, Asin is threatening Anambra governorship election. That's according to INEC. Seven vehicles, 373 generating sets, burnt. Reps query NHIS over 120, 152 million naira spent on face masks, hand sanitizers and others. McIndage hides APC for not fielding candidates in Oyo local government polls. Edo PDP crisis. Obasaki's loyalists begin gradual takeover of structures. PDP finances, not EFCC's business. Also on the Nigerian Tribune, Buhari receives NEMA's 2020 reports, inducts 1.9 billion Naira Japanese disaster reduction equipment. Gunmen kill 15 in two communities in Plateau. Police confirm abduction of six as residents block Abuja Kaduna Highway over insecurity. Only God can wipe my tears, Asani, late pilot, pilot's father. Loss of officers has increased our problems, Buhari. FEC police council meetings postponed. And lastly, reps move to scrap NYC. Bill set for second reading. Those are the stories on the Nigerian Tribune. The Nation newspapers next. Uh, the big one there says, uh, Presidency slams Southern Governor's open grazing ban. It also says, More INEC offices raised in Anambra, Enugu, and Imo. And why autonomy for legislature and judiciary is key by agency DG. We can also see here, uh, APC must honor North-South Pass uh, Shift Pact. Or your APC chieftain and wife abducted. 58 killed in Niger, Benue, and Plateau states. Anti kidnapping protesters block Abuja Kaduna Road. We can also see here uh, Buhari governors and others to determine APC convention date. And uh, federal government to fund ranching. Akiridulu ban is irreversible. Those are the big ones. Shocking about 58 killed in Niger. Um, being under Plateau states, is, uh, mm. a couple of stories that didn't make the headlines. I hope they show up at some point. All right. On the Punch newspaper, the Esaba declaration is here again. Governors disagree as presidency backs Malami on open grazing ban. Governors' announcement on grazing is of questionable legality. That's according to the presidency. Ondo governor says, system outdated. We have to stop grazing cows uh, from Kaurana Muda to Lagos. Also on the Punch newspaper, federal government bars 22-year aircraft from Nigeria, releases 5 billion Naira aviation bailout. Experts predict 11.5% lending rate as Monetary Policy Committee ends meeting. 
Reps alleged sabotage grill officials over $120 million abandoned port scanners. Indian strain, federal government begins hunts for 90 isolation evaders on Wednesday. Taiwo was billed to go on UK course from June 12th, says sister of late pilot Asani. Also on the Punch newspaper, um, the story reads, doctor kidnapped in ambulance, in ambulance, APC berates Makinde over insecurity. Lagos Ogun signed MOU on Joint Development Commission. Firm petition CP tackles monarch as traditionalist disrupts construction. Abuja-bound nutritionist missing for 18 days between Ogun and Lagos. Ex-Niger governor blackmailer, chronic liar, serial betrayer. That's according to Wiki. And we can see a picture here on the Punch newspaper. We see that it looks like... Uh, Tires are being burnt on the roads with lots of onlookers. And the caption reads, Residents of uh, Tofa local government area of Niger State on Saturday during a protest against abductions on the Abuja Kaduna Highway on Monday. Those are the ones on the punch. All right, uh, Chris Wandu, let's bring you in um, and uh, probably start with the violence in the uh, southeast and, of course, the attack on INEC offices. Uh, probably we'll start with that. I think we lost him. Uh, once we reconnect, we'll be speaking you know, on that. I'm not sure what exactly is going on. And we've brought this up a couple of times on this platform and uh, spoken about uh, what seems to be going on and who is angry with INEC in the southeast, you know, who um, is behind these continued attack, uh, attacks on the INEC offices in the southeast. It started with police stations, um, you know, and now it's moved to INEC offices. Um, what exactly is the bigger plan and mm -hmm. what, what, you know, are we not, you know, seeing or what are we not aware of? Um, we still, of course, uh, lack proper investigations from the police force, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, clarity with, you know, some of all these things. And how come nobody has been arrested um, yet? Yes. Another question is, is it impossible for, you know, seeing that this has been happening, you know, in the past weeks and even almost a month now, seeing how different INEC offices across different states have been attacked by arsonists, burnt, isn't it possible for the police or INEC to request the police assistance to secure the area? Because well, we, know, we know the level of security we have. We just have somebody who's there. He doesn't have arms, maybe ha lacks training. So isn't it, imp is it impossible for the government to ensure security of INEC offices in the country. It's, it's not even election year, and we're seeing these things. What, what will happen in the next one year and two years? Well, it's um, just really if police, scary. If police stations themselves have been attacked and exactly. burnt, you know, then <laughs> which you police know? So who, officer who, who, is going to... who would secure who? <laughs> um, you know, I just feel bad, you know, that we, we still haven't been able to... We haven't heard any report of anybody being arrested. Um, it really just shows a complete failure of our security system and security infrastructure. If... Weeks and weeks and weeks have gone, and more of these offices have been attacked, and police stations have been attacked, and we still haven't heard no suspect. that one person has been arrested in connection with these attacks that has provided information as to what exactly is going on. There has to be an answer, you know, and, you know, I don't want to believe that there is no investigation going on, but even if there is or there isn't, how come nobody has been brought forward? It shouldn't take this long, and sadly... My fear is that we might just move on from all of this and nobody eventually will be arrested or brought to book. There has to be one person who should know somebody, who should be able to tell what exactly is going on. You know, these attackers don't, you know, fall from space. They are indigents, I believe, or they are people who live in that same society uh, or maybe coming from outside. Nobody, you know, has an idea. But there has to be one person who should have been arrested by now uh, to tell a story uh, or at least to be honest, you know, with uh, the police or what, about what exactly is going on. I don't know um, what will be the answer eventually. And, you know, like I asked earlier, what exactly might be the bigger plan or the big picture? Is it, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, reduce the um, possibility of elections in 2023? Is it an attack on voting generally um, in the southeast? Or there's something that, you know, we're not aware of? Wow. Well, while we ponder on that question, we also see that the presidency, after weeks of the ASAPA declaration, they responded, basically attacking southern governors and saying, you know, you did not propose any solution. And basically what you're saying has questionable legality. You know, so this also is a very important issue, 
because we know how, how much crisis and insecurity um, we've had due to the farmers' headers conflict, and how the southern governors met to say, one way we can solve this is to ban you know, herders from moving freely and openly with their, with their cattle. We saw APC Southwest governors also met. They endorsed this and said, yes, we agree that open grazing should be banned. Everyone's looking forward to a solution, saying ranching, that should be the option. But the presidency's response here is, is in a totally different direction, saying, you know, basically attacking this. So I really wonder what exactly, what laws the presidency would begin to institute if the state government, if we've been talking about, you know, devolution of powers, state autonomy mm -hmm. and all of that, and these states are saying we're banning open grazing in our state, I, I'm, I'm really keen to see what laws or orders or declaration the federal government will make to, yes, to overturn any. that decision. Or if this is just a newspaper article based on the press statement from Bashir Ahmed or one of his other media agencies. Yeah, aides. very likely that's what it is. I don't think, um, you know, the, the Constitution already guarantees, you know, gives uh, state governors right over, you know, lands, you know, um, in their state. And so they can, you know, and they, you know, have the rights to say we do not want any cattle moving you know, um, you know, across the state. You know, if you want to get a ranch, get a ranch. If you want to pay for land mm -hmm. and set up a ranch, then do so. I remember I saw a picture of the Jersey cows. I spoke about that some time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, those cows are brought in from, you know, the U.S., you know, to some states in the, in the West. Uh, we're doing very well, you know, g giving up to 150 liters of milk uh, per uh, cow. Um, whereas the cows here in Nigeria will only be able to produce, you know, about, maybe about 10 or 14 of them will only produce 50 liters, whereas one of those cows, and so, um, one of those Jersey cows was produced as much as 150 liters a day. And so um, governors have the right to say, we do not want cows or cattle moving around our state. We would rather have you pay for land, get a ranch, um, and you know, you, know, um, you know, train your cattle there. You know, set up a small secondary primary school, let them go to school in the, in the ranch. Yes. But the thing is, um, this once again brings back the conversation on Atiku Abubakar's response to yes. this, where he said, he believes it's best when all state governors come, come together, together with a solution and come together Which is with what an they have agreement. Done. Yes. Yeah. Well, not all. Um, there yeah. have been, you know, the southern governors who have made their statements. The APC leadership, Bolatin and a couple of other people also made, you know, um, um, also agreed with the idea of banning open grazing. But, you know, there's still a lot of states who haven't, you know, actually come out to say, we agree with this. Northern states have not. Let me, let me just be honest. Mm -hmm. We agree with this and we, of course, will go ahead with, you know, um, you know uh, banning open grazing in our our states also. So this is what I think is lacking. All states need to come together and take a decision on what exactly you know must be done. Yes. And for those states who feel like they don't want to ban open grazing, then they can allow you know grazing in their states. Uh, but for southern governors, um, there has to be a decision, and that decision has been made. The presidency deciding what stands to take, you know, might be like you said, you know, from one of the aides, you know, but it still represents the presidency. Um, and, you know, I remember about two weeks ago, I was saying that when you attack decisions by a certain group of people and you are not able to bring up your own decisions that are better or your mm -hmm. own resolutions that are better, then it, it kills the whole process of building together and moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, what exactly is the presidency recommending? Are we going back to recommending Ruga? Uh, settlements? Are we going back to recommending, you know, any of all those ideas that have been shut down in the past? Um, is the presidency truly, in, you know, interested in securing lives and property of Nigerians? Is the presidency really interested in ending the farmers' headers clashes, the disruption of farms across the country, the uh, rustling of cattle across the country? Or do we want to continue to play politics with this? Mm. And, you know, that's the question that Nigerians should be asking the presidency, who, you know, whoever that, you know, institution represents. Um, what are you suggesting? And instead of attacking whoever it is that you decide that you want to attack, what are you suggesting? And for those who say, oh, you know, these, you know, resolutions are nonsense, there have been other resolutions in the past that have not been implemented. Um, bring up your own resolutions, let Nigerians listen to it and say, okay, yes, you know, this one is better. Or this one, you know, might make more sense. But if you're not bringing up your own resolutions that, you know, Nigerians appeal to and agree with, then um, we're simply just playing politics with, um, with all of this, you know. But I like where, you know, Governor Akira Delu um, is, and he has said that the ban is irreversible. He has taken his, his stand, yes. and that's what it will be. Um, they need to go further with continuing to push for state police, continue to push for more control over the security architecture in their states so that they know that they are fully responsible for security. They continue to collect every month um, security votes 
which runs into millions and millions of naira. It's unaccounted for. Nobody explains what those you know, funds are used for. Um, and that, of course, runs into billions of naira annually that is shared across states as security votes. And so they should take responsibility. And if this is their own way of taking responsibility, then um, I'm all for it, uh, personally. Hmm. Um, we apologize. We were having challenges uh, bringing in... Um, uh, guest this morning, Chris Wandu, and so you know we're just having a quick review uh, while you know we try to connect with um, you know Chris Wandu. Fifty-eight people killed in Benue um, and uh, two other states. I saw in the news, you know, people saying up to hundred people were killed in certain places. Um, and and um, I think on social media yesterday, it's, it's not been you know verified. It didn't make any of the papers today, but it should still be alarming that fifty-eight Nigerians lost their lives um, in a time when we are not fighting a war with another country, when we are not you know, being bombarded by another country, where Nigerians are being killed by persons in Nigeria who commit these crimes and walk away, commit these crimes and go back to, to hiding and you know, maybe return in another week and commit another atrocity like this. 58 Nigerian lives are as important as any other Nigerian living in Nigeria or even in diaspora. Mm -hmm. um, and so it should make you know, national headlines. It should be shocking enough to put the country at a standstill. It should be shocking enough to tell everyone to you know, take a pause this morning and ask what exactly is going on. 58, 58 human beings will not see Christmas this year. 58 human beings will not see um, Democracy Day, will not be able to start the new week. Um, mm -hmm. And that's it. <clears throat> it should be alarming enough. You know, and any other person who's, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I said it yesterday that we should stop going back to blaming or referring to what happened in mm -hmm. the past administrations. That's why, the, you know, Nigerians voted. That's why Nigerians brought in a new, um, a new government. Chris Wandu, thanks uh, for joining us. Apologies for the, well, um, issues with the network. Can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. What's again? Good, Good morning. Thanks for joining well, us. We have time to just quickly address uh, two stories. So let's quickly, you know, uh, speak on the um, uh, attack on INEC offices in the southeast. Once again, I know you've spoken about this before, but it, you know, doesn't seem to have ended. Um, what exactly would you say is going on? Um, that is the question that security agencies need to answer. Because everybody doesn't know what is going on. Um, the attack I make offices uh, across the, the south is, is becoming worrisome. Um, the Boni, Enugu, Anambra, Imu, um, Ab. Uh, so it's so terrible that um, they now not be able to, the security agents have not been able to get anybody or arrest anybody. Um, that to me is uh, is worrisome, and uh, probably that shows some level of uh, incapacity uh, or lack of capacity on the part of our security agencies, especially the police. But don't also forget that also um, the security agents, especially the police, are also under attack. So um, you can see what is going on that day. Also, they not be able to have the capacity as it were, present to be able to tackle the issue as it were. Because we are seeing the officers attack um, of police stations also within the um, the uh, southeast and also south south. Uh, so I, I think that what the government needs to do really is able to meet this report. We are just a few months away from 2020 election, and if this continues, then um, there is problem. What I don't understand is the direct attack on INEC um, offices. The perpetrators of this attack have not come out to speak. Their reasons, and um, we don't seem to make any headway um, in apprehending them. They attack them in the night, is it during the day? So there should be some level of um, holistic plans on the um, security agencies and um, collaboration with the security agencies. No longer the police this time around, the civil defense should get involved, the DSS should be involved. And um, I wouldn't want to say the army because the army seems to have so much on their plate now. But this Okay, Mr. Wanto, another story we've been seeing you know, in recent time is a high rate of kidnapping. Um, on the Punch newspaper, a story here mentioned that a doctor was kidnapped in an ambulance and also that an Abuja-bound nutritionist has been missing for about 18 days between Lagos and Ogun State. 
We also saw another story on the nation that all your APC chieftain's wife abducted. Stories like this, abductions, kidnappings, people, people being missing, you know, here and there in Nigeria. Yes, um, don't also forget that first yes, and the, um, the, the Abuja, uh, Abuja, Abuja Katna Hyde was blocked by uh, some people. Use. Yes, who claimed that um, some number of people were kidnapped and under just last night. I got um, a message from a, a legislator who told me about a kidnapping incident going on on the Undo. Uh, on your road, and they're very to show me a lineup of schools. People have not their very good and run into the bushes and the rest of them. Um, that there are some uh, level of them can have to do on that route. So, is, is, so that's what I'm talking about. We are talking of I, I, I need officers here attacked, I'm talking of uh, police stations here attacked, I'm talking of um, uh, headmen attacking, I'm talking of both eye swap. And now, also the issue of kidnapping. From a big defense. And that shows the level of it. Nobody is secured in this country. No single person. Before we had it, uh, we had um, uh, this problem, at least within the uh, northeast, northwest. Um, but now, things seem to have spread. Every part of the country um, is now getting to fill up. A few days ago, there are some. Um, there are some rumors that there was some level of kidnapping in Lagos. That is, the Lagos State Commission of Police came up with you to say that um, there was nothing like that. But, but just yesterday, there was also an attempt by some hoodlums to attack a, a police station in Lagos and try to burn it down. Um, but the CP also came out to say that they could be uh, those that tried to uh, burn the police station down into it and that truck were arrested. So that shows the level of insecurity. And that to me, is a, 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 by just be a tip of the iceberg of what will happen as we move towards the 2023 election. We are talking of the uh, election in 2023. We might just have a scenario that we will have more worse uh, situation compared to what we had in 2015 general election. We are election has to be postponed for some weeks uh, just for us to be able to handle the level of security. And as I said, this uh, that was even limited to not now we have it across board and we should come from. Uh, uh, some level of concern for the president and those in authority. And that is why I, I was a bit appalled by the statement coming up from the president yesterday on the resolution of the southern governors. Uh, when I look at that press statement that was issued by the presidency and signed by the, um, the spokesperson of the president, Rabbi Shewo, I was appalled. The, use, the language used was on court, on call for and to the extent of going around calling elected leaders of the South, South all manner of names and just of them, using all sorts of congestion. But you know that it's just a full out created to Tony General Vision, um, who have who also they stand on that and supporting the, the and condemning the Southern governors for taking the whole list, um, um Issue on on issue of security. They are the chief security officers of their state, and they know what is happening. And that is why they are trying as much as possible. They are even having the federal government. If they say that an open grade our place, we want because of the level of this. Issue. I think they should be commented instead of um, this level of condemnation from the federal government. But anyway, whether they like it or not, federal government can only what they can only do is to go to court and try to challenge the resolution of the federal government. They say they are resolute in their, um, in their resolution. They are resolute. Uh, and they are not going back on it. All right. Um, Chris Wandu, apologies for the network uh, challenges that we had earlier, um, but we have to wrap up here this morning. Thank you so much for your patience and for speaking with us on the program Thank this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye. All right. Uh, stay with us. Uh, what happened on this day in history? I'm going back to the actually just uh, last year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to tell you one of the biggest events that, of course, uh, did shape a little bit of history mm -hmm. um, in the year 2020. And I'm going back to the year 2011 to tell you the story about one of America's most richest, most influential women in media. Do stay with us.